folks, Kevin Inoue here again from Fight Designer LLC. Uh, just another quick share before I grind some of these down. Um, I had a recent post about the, the tools of training in stage combat in the online world. Uh, one of the things that I decided to do with some of my setup funds is get some cheap polypropylene trainers that I could check out to my students uh, that they could take and work with in their own apartments and homes while we're doing online uh, lessons about the basics of parries and positions and grit and stance and all that stuff. Um, so I, uh, I went and uh, I took advantage of the sale that uh, Museum Replicas had a while back. Um, and I've tried a couple of things. I already had a couple of the cold steel polypropylene trainers with a hand and a half. And I got some of the uh, Honshu practice broadswords and the ones that uh, Museum Reps just calls the training medieval sword. Those were $34.95 each before they were to sale. The, the Honshu were $41.95 each. So not super cheap, but a lot cheaper than a real steel sword and a lot easier to send home with a student. Um, plus, what you can do is cut them down. So what I'm going to be doing with the vast majority of these, and I just did a poll with my students, it sounds like from this cohort, six are going to want them cut down and two are going to want full-size ones. I guess they got a bigger space and they're not worried about it. Um, but this uh, just trunk of blade that's basically the fort that you'd be parrying with, allows you to still be able to, to train in terms of where the parry is. You get some sense of like the, the weight that be on that, uh, how to line the wrist, how to get the positions for your cuts and do wards and things like that, but you know, without hitting your ceiling, because right now I can touch my ceiling right now. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, I'm using that. I'm not in a big space, right? And so for me to be able to learn how to do an, uh, a high guard, for example, <laughs> um, or be able to do a full swing, for an avoid, right? I'm gonna be hitting things. This is uh, my other little track training dummies in here. Just a little pool noodle from my uh, pull down arm. So for me, if I wanna be able to train how to do a full swipe and not be knocking things over and putting holes in my ceiling, uh, I figure this is about as good as I'm gonna get. But I hadn't played around with too many different types and so I wanted to compare. I thought some of you might be interested as well. So here's a quick rundown. First up, cold steel. Um, they're really clunky, <laughs> um, kind of clunky, chunky things. Uh, very heavy, but from cutting them down, that's actually nice to have a little bit of weight still to train with. Um, I don't have, feel like I have to add any weight to this to still feel like it's it behaves like a sword. This actually feels kind of like one of my Tinkerline swords in terms of the, the weight right now in the center of balance. Um, center of balance is still forward of the, of the guard, so there is still some weight out past your grip, which is nice. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the aesthetics. There's a little rubber band that holds this part off. So if you lose that, or if it breaks, like on this one, it just pops right off. I guess it's nice for transport. Um, but, uh, and, and it's warped a little bit. I don't know if you can see, it's kind of bent. But again, if I'm gonna cut them down, it doesn't really matter. So I, I really didn't like these just because they don't feel at all sword-like. And frankly, the cut down one of this feels much more like a real sword to me, now that I've used decent swords. This one feels more like a, a slightly warped starfire in terms of balance almost. It just feels clunky and not live at all. So I'll probably cut down this one too to get some more of my practice swords. Um, but the other types, the quote unquote medieval training sword. I actually like the, the grip a lot better on this. The weight is better than the cold steel. If you hold them up side by side, the proportions are not that different. Uh, the cold steel is a little bit longer. Um, you can see the tip goes out another couple inches. If I line up the tips, you can see a little easier on the, on the hilt. The hilt proportions are about the same. The pommel is a little less chunky, um, and the blade is also less chunky, so it feels lighter, but also when I cut down the blade, I expect it's not going to suddenly be way too light in the blade because it's still not going to have much counterbalance from a pommel. So I appreciate that. Um, it's a nice, comfortable grip. Cosmetically, it's kind of hokey. I don't know. To me, this is a little a little cheesy looking. I can I can when my website's back up, I can inset some, so you can get a better picture of this. So it's not bad, and it's the same polypropylene stuff. Um, but at least this one's not warped. <laughs> um, it's all solid one piece, so it's not going to come apart for better or for worse. And it's a decent sized grip, decently comfortable. You know, I can work with that. It's a little weird that it's kind of like in it bubbled in here. Uh, on the Rikasso, but if you're doing a reverse grip thing where you slip your thumb up there, it actually feels kind of nice. And then the next one up is the Honshu, and this is, a, uh, I think, a pretty good copy just from the looks of it, of their steel swords. I haven't actually played with any of their steel ones. I will warn you, this is pretty darn pointy. Um, so even if you're not using these as, uh, 
you know, for sparring or anything like that, you still might want to just take a file to it or some sandpaper and smooth it off a little bit, because this could really scratch up someone's ceiling or furniture or uh, upholstery on your couch. Um, build quality, yeah, not too bad. There's, there's a little warping in this. It's not super straight, but some of these can also just warp with heat, I know. Polypropylene tends to be pretty darn tough. Um, I do like the, the weight of it. It feels pretty good. Um, it's, it's not too, uh, too blade heavy for what it is. Um, I generally like the grip, but it, it tapers a bit much. I don't like the way that it's so wide up here and that it makes a direct triangle down. To me, that makes it actually a little harder to get a good grip on, um, unless I'm also doing two-handed. So two-handed, it's not bad because of the, the angle my front grip is at, but if I'm doing a, a single hand, and these are hand and a half, um, I just don't find that as comfortable, but that's a pretty minor picky thing. Um, when you compare this with the uh, medieval training sword, the blade is a little longer, so the blade is closer to the, the Colt Steel hilt. Again, almost identical, a little bit less uh, Cleon length there, you know, maybe like three quarters of an inch or something. Um, pommel's a different shape, but otherwise about the same. So here's the Hanchu next to the Colt Steel. Almost exactly the same length. Cold Steel's maybe a tiny bit longer, but you can see how the Hunter's got a lot better taper. The Cold Steel is just thick and beefy all the way up. So the Cold Steel's gonna feel a lot slower in the hand. If what you want is exercise and build up your strength, sure, go for one of these. It doesn't feel like a sword though to me. If you actually wanna practice techniques, I think you're much better off with either the training medieval broadsword uh, or the uh, or the Hunter. Um Cosmetically, I think I like the Hunter better. It's cleaner lines. Um, but part of that clean lines is you got sharp edges, so you need to round those off a bit. The um, training medieval sword here comes out of the box nice and smooth all the way around, nice and rounded. So that's totally safe. Um, I might not cut those down and leave those as the longer ones for the, the folks that want those. But any of these are an option, and they're going to be pretty darn indestructible, and they're also going to seem a lot less like a sword, especially when they're cut down, uh, in terms of having a student have to stick one in a backpack or a garbage bag and take it home. Um, and hopefully, if, especially if they're cut down, they'll be a lot less tempting for anyone to walk off with, and, and we'll get everything checked back in at the end of the year. Um, I will say, I used to also have some of the Dave Rawlings tra uh, trainers that uh, Cass Hanway makes. Um, I wasn't as huge a fan of those either. They just felt toy-like. They felt kind of plasticky. Um, but I never tried cutting one down to see what the interior composition was like or anything like that. I ended up selling those off. Um, kind of kicking myself now because then I just had to buy more. But, uh, um, but yeah, I, I think of the, of the polypropylene, these are the way to go. Now, the other obvious options, yes, you could get wooden swords, wooden trainers, um, and they cut down just fine. You could sound off the edges. Um, I never know when I get these how sturdy they're going to be and when they're going to like splinter or something. So I'm a little more suspicious of wood in terms of durability. But if you can get some cheap, that's certainly an option. And then another option would be like foam larp swords. Um, and you can get these for from like half the price or even less than the polypropylene ones. Um, these usually have a little PVC or fiberglass rod in the middle and some foam on the outside. And yeah, you could use these to practice forms. They're going to be super light though. Um, you know, much, much lighter than the real thing, which can lead to some bad habits. And especially when you cut it down, it's going to feel like nothing. You might as well just be using a quarter inch dowel to practice your forms at that point. It will teach you blade alignment and grip perhaps in some ways that a dowel wouldn't, but it's not going to a whole lot better otherwise. And it, it just screams toy, which encourages students to treat things in the wrong way. We don't want something that screams toy. We want something that says training tool. There is at least one company out there making, uh, uh, HEMA longsword trainers for indoor practice cuts and things that are flared at the end to give a little bit extra weight. They're steel, supposed to, to replicate the weight of uh, a longsword or at least a fetter. Um, but they're, they cost as much as the stage combat sword does to me. So it's just really not worth it to me. I needed something that was cheap as well. My hope is even when we're not in COVID times, I'll be able to check these out for folks who want to practice stuff at home in between classes. Because one of the problems in stage combat is you generally can't check out swords to folks just for liability reasons, for safety reasons, um, because of space reasons. So this, this will hopefully give me an option going forward, even when we're not having to train from home. That's my hope anyway. It does mean I'm having to meet in person this week so that I can hand these out to students though and check them out. So we've got some, uh, some small sessions where it'll be just two at a time in the room with me and they each get, each group gets 20, 25 minutes 
Um, and so we can work on some stuff there in person without having everybody breathing the same air at the same time. But, you know, it's not quite as convenient as teaching from home. Nor quite as fun as getting to teach in non-COVID times. But we work with what we got. That's compromises we have to make. So if you're looking for polypropylene swords, I can drop uh, the names and links for some of these if you're interested. Uh, Museum reps have sales that come up fairly often. So I hope that helps at least somebody out there. Um, if you have other questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. Uh, my show is now done, um, so I might actually have time to do more of these at some point. Maybe catch up on some YouTube ones, because I haven't done those in ages. But we'll see. No promises. <laughs> um, you know, uh, uh, unless there's demand, not a lot of reason for me to do these, because I'm not getting paid for it. All right, stay safe, look good, have fun, and uh, stay healthy. Thanks.